What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to dive into the new Wet n Wild Saved by the Bell collection. They sent this to me in PR and I actually probably a week and a half ago uploaded a little short both here on YouTube and on Instagram going through and swatching everything. So you might have seen that but I wanted to do like a deep dive, actually use everything, share my thoughts on everything. And so, I don't know why I'm holding this adorable backpack. It too came in the collection, but yeah, let's just get into it and do some makeup. So first let's start with the eyes, but in order to do that, I need to open up my brush trio that comes in my cell phone shaped plastic brush holder. I cannot believe cell phones were this big. In case you are too young to remember to have been alive. Wow, that is depressing, but this is what cell, how big cell phones were and what they look like. We were aware they were bricks. We know. You don't need to tell us. I mean, this is so big, they could have fit a whole brush collection in this thing. The three, the trio, oh my God. The trio of brushes only takes up the top half. There is all of this wasted space under here. I think they should have put out a whole brush collection, but we'll make do with what we have. So the shadow palette that came out in this collection, I actually really like it. I don't necessarily know that it is reflective of the 90s. I mean, it's colorful and uh, from my memory, I wasn't, I am 32. And so in the 90s, I was like still a little pre-makeup. I was like in the play makeup era. And I do remember, you know, the blues, the pinks, more vibrant colors being in style then. So yeah, I mean, yeah, this feels, this feels like it's in the right space to me. And I think while I prime my eyes real quick, this is just a Max Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. Uh, I think today I'm going to do a more purpley, a monochromatic look, kind of to compliment. This is a flannel that I talked about getting in my Nordstrom anniversary sale haul. So comfy. And so I think playing with this trio of shades right here down the center will really complement it nicely. Plus I have been watching, Andrew and I have both been watching a lot of Glow Up, which is a makeup competition show on Netflix if you're here in the US, but it is originated in the UK on BBC. So in case you can or have already watched, that's the original network it airs on, but it is also on Netflix and it, I, I really like it. The third season's really good. I mean, I guess I wouldn't say it's any better than any other season. I just like the show as a whole. It's one of those where it, every time I watch it, it reinvigorates my love for makeup. And one of the contestants was wearing, uh, wasn't even part of the challenge. This was just their natural makeup that they were wearing as they were participating was this monochromatic blue eye, where blue spotlight eye. So it was like, you know, deeper blue on the inner and outer corner with then the lighter blue. It's just, ugh, I'm trying to recreate that. Theirs was all matte. This will have a shimmer in it, but we'll just see how it goes. So I'm going to start in my crease with this blush shade here using, these brushes don't have names, but it's basically the fluffy blending slash crease brush of the trio. And I'm gonna start working that into, like I said, my crease, focusing it in the deepest part of my socket uh, and all, cause I wanna do a halo eye, I'm actually bringing it all the way from inner to outer corner. And then once I've kind of built up the intensity here in the crease, I'll take what's left on the brush and really smoke it and blur and blend it out from there. And I'm also just gonna pull a little bit of that on my lower lash line. Okay, now using that same brush, I'm gonna go in with the deepest purple shade in this palette, which looks like it is kicking up quite a bit of fallout. So I'm hoping this doesn't mess with the foundation that I have. So far, so good. Fingers crossed. Which by the way, the foundation I'm wearing is my Lorac Pro Soft Focus Foundation that I'm actually, whoops, that I'm actually trying over a new primer that I got based on, kind of slightly based on the recommendation from one of you guys. It's the Light Source 3-in-1 Illuminating Primer. So if I'm extra glowy today, that is why. So this shade I'm patting on my outer and also inner corner to go for that spotlight effect. And then we'll eventually kind of take what's left on my brush to run through my crease and connect the two, but leaving the center of my lid blank. And while I'm doing this, I have a little bit of a confession. I didn't really watch Saved by the Bell. I don't know if it was the wrong era for me. Like I said, I was still kind of like in elementary slash middle school at the time it was airing. And I was trying to think back, like I remember seeing it on TV, but it was on at the same time as something else I think I like to watch. Like, 
I liked Fresh Prince, loved watching Fresh Prince, but then I think there also might have been, like, was it in the TGIF era where I would also watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch with Melissa Joan Hart, the original? Like, I want to say those were happening at the same time, and so I didn't really watch Saved by the Bell all that much. You know what I mean? So I don't mean to be a poser. I don't, I'm not trying to come off as like an original Saved by the Bell enthusiast. However, it is giving me a lot of nostalgia vibes. I've been on a nostalgia movie kick lately where it started with, I think it started with Drop Dead Gorgeous with Kirsten, I mean, a ton of stars, but Kirsten Dunst, um, then led me to watching Dick also with Kirsten Dunst, such a funny movie and such a, fun, a great soundtrack. Go check it out on Spotify. Just a lot of like good um, 70s, late 60s, 70s music on it. And then, then I watched She's All That and it reminded me, you know what else Rachel Lee Cook was in? Josie and the Pussycats, another great movie with another great soundtrack. Check that one out on Spotify too. I swear I listen to music as Spotify, but check it out wherever you listen to music because... I forgot how many good songs were on that soundtrack. And so this collection definitely has me kind of thinking even further back because I feel like those were early 2000s. And so this makes me want to go back and watch like Teen Witch or uh, Troop Beverly Hills. Oh, such good movies, such good movies. So after this, I am actually going to find out where both of those movies are streaming, which is such a luxury to have these days. You can just look online and find out where things are streaming. Because remember back in the day when these things were actually on TV, you had to like watch all of the promo content in between the shows you were actually watching on the channels you were watching them on to be like, oh, the monthly lineup, the weekly lineup, the monthly lineup, they're showing Troop Beverly Hills this month and it's on a Thursday and I have to be, you know what I mean? Mm. My, my, my. What a world of luxury we live in. Now for a little bit of blending up to my brow, I am gonna use uh, this light peachy shade here. Again, once again, same brush. I just wanna blur further the edges of this look up to my brow before I go in with the next shade. Let's do that. And for this, I am taking the flat shader that comes in this brush trio, and I'm gonna go in with the shimmery purpley lavender shade in this palette. Um, I'm getting a feeling that I might, this might be better applied with a finger, or maybe it's the brush itself. Sometimes I feel like with brushes like this where they're very flat and the fibers that Wet n Wild or just in general companies sometimes use with their brushes, it's too smooth. It It's like you want your brushes to be soft, but a brush that is too soft and too smooth like doesn't adequately grab hold of product to place it on your eyes. And so I kind of feel like we might, we might be in that kind of territory right now. So I'm actually, I'm actually just gonna use my finger with this. Oh yeah. And then I'm gonna go back in with that crease and inner and outer corner shade, the deepest shade, to just make sure all of that blends in together. So I will try this flat shader brush again for my inner corner, which I'm gonna, you know, do something a little different, go in with this light uh, frosty orange, not orange, there is an orange in this palette. This is a yellow and I'm going in with the golden yellow shade that looks like it is gonna be very, ooh, yeah, very bright. Even on my broken inner corners. There's something about the shape of my inner corners, I mentioned this before, that like anytime I place a super bright highlight shade in here, the shape of my eyes and my inner corner doesn't catch the light like it does with some people. So some, in fact, there's a, con a contestant on Glow Up who she constantly does these vibrant, either bright with uh, like a light shadow or bright with a bold color on her inner corners. And I'm just the whole time envious because I know I can't do that with my inner corners. They're just not built that way. But it sure doesn't mean I won't keep trying. Not only did I get the new Pat McGrath Utopia palette, but I also got the like enhancer pen that you're supposed to use to make all of her shades, but specifically the transformative shades extra vibrant. Pick that up too thinking maybe, just maybe, that would fix my inner corner issue. 
Now, this collection has a mascara. It is, once again, not named. I guess it's just the Wet Wild Saved by the Bell mascara. It has a kind of slightly banana-shaped wand with shorter bristles on one end, longer bristles on the other. And I have to say, it doesn't pick up a ton of product right out of the tube, but the short bristles, short bristles do a pretty decent job at applying the product. And I'm gonna use the longer side to help distribute that throughout my lashes so they're less clumpy. Okay, I have to say, I can't remember the last Wet n Wild mascara I liked. I don't, I don't tend to think of them as a brand that has mascaras that I love or work for my lashes. And this one is actually coming through for me. I wonder if there is a permanent equivalent in their collection because for this to not have like a specific name, Kind of makes me think maybe they just repackaged an existing mascara, but then I would say that name, wouldn't it? Yeah, I would think so. I don't know, but I really like it. Do want to mention though, this is my first time wearing it, so I can't speak to lasting power, whether it smudges or flakes, which is the other way in which I find Wet n Wild mascaras tend to let me down is the longevities. The longevity of their formulas just don't tend to last on me. I either find that you know, I end up with a lot of mascara like up on my brow bone because it's transferred or they flake. Uh, they just, just haven't done it for me. So not sure about this formula, but can say that I like the way this looks on my lashes. Now let's move on to the cheeks and use our third and final brush, which is like a soft contour brush, but honestly, it's what I'm gonna use for basically everything today. So there are three face trios that you get. First is called Nerd Alert. This is like two peachy shades. One is lighter, softer. One is a little bit deeper. I wouldn't say it's any deeper than like a medium peach. In fact, I would say they're very similar. Um, then there is It's All Right, which is a more pink toned palette. One is a softer, lighter bubblegum pink. The other is a deeper berry pink. And then the third is called hashtag relationship goals. And this is a soft peach with a soft golden highlight. I would say it's, it's all of these others are matte and more blushy. Whereas this one has a highlight shade in here that actually has shimmer. And this one, if you saw the swatch video that I did, you will have seen that it crumbled on me. It's a very soft blush powder apparent, like way softer than any of the other blushes in here. So I didn't touch this one any harder or swatch it any more roughly than I did the others. It's just, it's a very, very soft blush shade. So I think first I'll go in with Nerd Alert, try and use one of these shades as like a kind of a fake bronze sort of shade on the back of my cheekbones. Very, very softly though, just to give like the illusion of a contour. That's actually, working out pretty, pretty well. It's just a nice, soft little peach shade back there, adding some definition. But I don't, am I gonna take this? I guess I am. I guess I'm taking this all over my face. Kind of where I would naturally apply a bronzer, just not as heavily. Okay, so there is that. Then for the sake of the pinks I have going on elsewhere, I'm gonna go in with It's All Right. And I gotta be honest, this is the one I'm like least comfortable to use because uh, I'm not normally a bubblegum pink blush kind of person, but I think we gotta go for it because we have our berry eyes on. So I'm actually gonna do a combo of these because the deep pink or the deep berry is very deep and the bright pink is very bright. So I'm gonna see what a combo of these two things gives us and we'll go from there. And that I'm just going to be super light because I feel like these are very, very pigmented and kind of powdery shades. I'm just gonna lightly dust that along the tops of my cheekbones. I'm actually pretty pleased with how easy this is to tone down and layer up, especially for matte shades. That can be kind of a challenge. Let's see if I can connect both my blush and my eyeshadow for some 90s authenticity. You know what I mean? But I think that's a sign of a good blush formula, a good matte blush formula, is if you can really be light with it and it's not chalky, it's not clinging, it's still blending super beautifully and the pigment's still showing up evenly. 
I like it. Now for the highlight. The only highlight we have, I am going in with relationship goals. Got a little bit of a mess in here on my highlight, so it might be a little contaminated with peach. Let's just clean that off. And this, well, we're in here with my fingers, so let's just go ahead and commit with the fingers. I'm gonna place that where I normally put my highlight, just the tops of my cheekbones. And that's beautiful. That's a really beautiful, subtle, pearlescent highlight. Kind of glittery. Okay, the more I look at it and inspect it, it is kind of glittery. It's not ultra, ultra fine, but it's still kind of wet looking. Well, no, up close you can definitely see that it's shimmery, but very pretty. I like it. Now I'm gonna, before I move on to lips, I'm gonna set all this with the Wanna Wrestle setting spray. Let's see how this, how this works. Mm. This has no scent, first of all, like no scent at all, but very fine mister, very impressed with the level of mist that comes out of this. It's a strong mist, it's a fine mist, it's an even mist, love it. Now let's finish this look off with some lips. Oh shoot, there is also a kabuki brush. So there are four brushes that come in this collection. Um, this, I have kind of grabbed, I used to use massive brushes to apply my foundation. Now I go in with more precise kind of, uh, precise and dense brushes, like this one from uh, Smashbox, you can see. I just get a little bit better buildable coverage than with a, something like Kabuki, but this would be good for like body bronzer, highlight, maybe even facial bronzer, like if you want a big, big application, broad bronzing. Um, but I just have grown to use Kabuki brushes like this less and less. Um, now onto the lips. Okay, so there are three lip liner lip gloss trios that come in this. The first that I'll talk about is Lisa. It is like a bubble gummy pink. The liner leans a bit more peachy, but the gloss is definitely more of a bubble gum type shade. Then there is Jessie, which has a nude liner and then a nude gloss, but I would say the gloss has a slightly more pink, more, more noticeable pink tone than the liner does. Then there is Kelly with a hot pink bubble gum liner and an equally bright hot pink lip gloss. These two are very, very similar next to each other, whereas the other two sets have a little bit more of a differentiation and contrast, I think, between the liner and the gloss. And for this eye look, I kinda don't know where to go. I think the peach is gonna be too warm. I have to go with one of the pinks, but I'm worried it'll be a little bit too too much. Let's go with the softer pink or Lisa's pink liner. And that I am not only using to line my lips, but also fill them too. And these are like kind of a classic wet and wild pencil, right? Like they're wooden, you have to sharpen them with a sharpener. They're not retractable or anything like that. And they do fall on the drier side. I currently have relatively dry lips. So they are clinging a little bit to that texture, but not, not a lot, not too much. Mm, I'm not sure about how I feel about this color, but let's commit. Let's commit fully to the gloss so we can see the two together. Also doing the Lisa lip gloss with this as well. Uh, how do we feel about that? Ooh, it's like a bubblegum scented lip gloss. I dig it. I like that. It's literally like, like bazooka bubblegum. I don't know if I've ever smelled a lip gloss like that. And it's my favorite scent ever. It's like kind of minty, mostly bubblegummy. I love that. Okay, so here is Lisa. I'm not sure this is the right color pick for my eyes, but here it is. I think I'm gonna take it off and try another gloss shade, provided it doesn't remove, and it did. It kind of took the lip liner with it. Well, let's try a different color combo. Let's try the peach, which is Jessie. I think that's my E2 peach. And then going in with the matching gloss. Same scent, by the way. Yeah, I think this one's better. It's a little bit too warm, I think, for the eyes, but I do think it's better than the bubblegum pink. Yeah, we're gonna go with this. We're gonna go with this. So that's it. That is the look using the uh, Save by the Bell collection from Wet n Wild. Pretty impressed with the eyeshadows, the face powders. I think the thing that I will use the least are the lip liners just because they are on the drier side, but I'm also not personally a lip liner person. Uh, but the other powder products are great. The setting powder or setting spray, although I don't 
it's refreshing. I don't tend to reach for setting sprays beyond taking the powderiness out of my uh, makeup because I don't, there are very, very few out there aside from like Huda Beauty Resting Boss Face and the Charlotte Tilbury Setting Powder, their setting spray that actually do the job of making my makeup last. So um, haven't tried this to see if it helps last, but it does, it did what I hope every other setting spray does for me, which is take the makeup-y, cakey powderiness out of my skin texture. And I love the mist on this guy. And I think if you go to the Wet n Wild website, they actually sell the whole PR kit that they sent to people. So if you want something like this backpack, which was kind of a bonus, I don't think you'll find this in drug, maybe you will find it in drugstores, but if you really want it, you could buy the whole kit, including this cute little, little zip up backpack kind of thing. Adorable. So that is it. That's the face. That's the review. That is the Wet n Wild Saved by the Bell collection. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!